What happens when a squad of elite soldiers has to face off against the ultimate beast? Let's get right into the story. Rothgar bled crimson. Choked skies, scorched earth, twisted metal skeletons littered the ground. Monuments to war. This was our battlefield. And I, Marcus, a veteran of a hundred dying worlds, was losing. Dixon muttered over the comms, tech jargon masking his fear. Sarge, this, this ain't right. The bodies, they, they're ripped apart. Vulcan, don't do this. Footprints. Monstrous gouges in the ashen ground. We weren't alone. Eyes up. I barked, a familiar fear tightening my gut. We were good soldiers. Delta Force, the best. But good wasn't good enough against the Vulcan. Big, brutal, and tech that made them damn near unstoppable. The air crackled. A blur of monstrous muscle and rage smashed through the trees. No warning, no tactic, just a force of nature unleashed. Ben and Jackson never saw it coming. Fall back! The order felt hollow in my mouth. Fall back to where? Fall back to die another day? Dixon was already running. Blind terror made him fast. Smart man. Me? I never ran. But facing this, a, a titan forged for slaughter. Even an old soldier like me had that flicker of animal doubt. I raised my rifle, more defiance than defense. At least I'd make this thing bleed. The beast roared and the sounds tearing through my last shred of bravado. Each pulse of its fury shook the ground. I fired bursts of plasma, scorched its mottled hide. Superficial damage stings to a raging bull. Dixon was a distant speck, swallowed by the choking dust. It was just me and the monster now. Every instinct screamed to run. Survival wasn't a noble death, it was getting the hell away. But my legs wouldn't obey. Something about this, it was wrong. Not just the size or the rage, but a cruel glint in its eye. A sliver of twisted intelligence. The beast charged, I dodged. More luck than skill. Claws ripped the ground where I'd stood seconds before. It learned fast. It adapted, just like its creators. A fallen tree lay ahead, a flimsy shield. I scrambled over to it as the beast crashed through the splintering, rotten wood. Up a treacherous slope, rocks tumbling beneath my boots. Pain spiked in my lungs, a hot iron in my chest. Fear turned the blood to acid. The incline was brutal, but panic was a stronger engine than exhaustion. I heard the beast gaining, its heavy footfalls a death nail. Ahead, a shadowed crevice offered hope, or a dead-end death trap. I didn't have time to think. A desperate scramble, I tumbled into the darkness, bruising myself against rough stone. Light vanished. I turned, panting, my pulse rifle trembling in my hands. Above the beast loomed a monstrous silhouette against the dim light. It hesitated. The cave held no tactical advantage for its bulk, but that cruel intelligence sparkled in its eyes again. This wasn't just hunting now, it was a game, and I was the cornered prey. The beast roared in frustration, echoing through the subterranean gloom. One clawed hand swatted at the cave entrance, sending rocks cascading down. Another test, probing my defenses. My breath echoed too loudly in the silence. The air was heavy, tinged with the scent of old blood and something fouler. My rifle felt useless against this creature, but a soldier didn't die unarmed. My hand tightened on my sidearm, a familiar weight reassuring in its deadliness. Then, a flicker in the far reaches of the cave, a strange, pulsing green glow. No time for questions, only survival. Aiming at the roof, I fired. Rocks cascaded, partially obscuring the entrance. The beast bellowed, enraged. I didn't wait to see the effect. Scrambling, desperate, I plunged into the darkness. The green glow, my only guide. The passage was unnaturally narrow, rough stone cutting into my knees. I ignored the pain, ignored the growing sense of dread. Every frantic heartbeat was a victory against the inevitable. The tunnel twisted and then abruptly opened into a chamber. The source of the green glow was chillingly clear. Vats, filled with the unearthly liquid, pulsed with sickening energy. And within them, the Vulcan. Twisted, mutated, some barely formed, others monstrously oversized. My stomach churned, not from fear now, but from disgust. This wasn't a battlefield anymore, this was a monstrous laboratory. 
And the beast, it, it wasn't an aberration. It was the pinnacle of their twisted science. Then came the alarm, a harsh, piercing wail. Not meant for me. A warning to its creators. I was already cornered, but now they knew. In the corner of my eye, I saw a larger vat and the hulking silhouette within. An unfinished monster. A door set into the far wall flickered with alien symbols. Survival, that primal instinct, kicked back in. I dashed past the vats, praying whatever was on the other side of that door was better than facing the beast again. Frantic fingers danced over the unfamiliar control panel of the mysterious door. Alien symbols mocked my ignorance, but desperation bred recklessness. I pounded the panel, risking electrocution, whatever it took to open the damn thing. The door hissed open, revealing a darkened passage beyond. Just as I lunged for the entrance, the beast burst into the lab, its guttural roar of frustration filling the chamber. It spotted me immediately. It learned fast. Way too fast. I sprinted, darkness enveloping me. The door slid shut with a groan, cutting off its enraged bellows. But its monstrous form was seared into my mind. I wouldn't hold it for long. The passage was dim, lit intermittently by flickering emergency lights that cast maddening shadows. My boots pounded the metal floor, breath ragged in my throat. Left, right, time warped, each heartbeat a countdown. I had the passage sloped upwards, a hatch promising a way out, or another trap. My lungs burned, old injuries throbbed in protest. Fear, that constant companion, turned my sweat to ice. But I kept running. I always kept running. With a desperate lunge, I pushed through the hatch. Harsh light stung my eyes, forcing me to squint. Then the world tilted in a dizzying rush. I was perched on a ledge, halfway down an immense shaft. Catwalks crisscrossed, impossibly high above and impossibly deep below. An access shaft, the heart of this monstrous facility. The fall would kill me, or perhaps... Maybe that was the kinder option. Behind me, metal shrieked. The beast had broken through the door, and below a monstrous yellow eye blinked open in the depths of the shaft. A second beast roused from its containment, and now I was just a mouse in the snake pit. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Just me and my sidearm against impossible odds. Marcus, old soldier, facing his final stand. The catwalk loomed above. A precarious, narrow path, but a path nonetheless. With a surge of defiant energy, I lowered myself to the slick metal. The drop below was a dizzying abyss, but staying meant death, and moving meant a chance. The second beast began its ascent, disturbing the fetid air with its roars. I had the catwalk split, promising two destinations, two unknown fates. No time to strategize, only react. Gut instinct sent me barreling to the right. Each jarring movement set a tremor down the ancient metal. Behind me, the catwalk groaned, protesting the strain of the beast's bulk. Claws scraped ominously, getting closer. Desperation made me faster. The tunnel I sprinted into was cramped, suffocating. The air hung thick with the scent of lubricant and decay, a testament to the Vulcan's disregard for maintenance. I couldn't afford to care, I just ran. Another split, tunnels branching in multiple directions, a deadly maze. No logic to my choice, only gut instinct. Left. I hurtled into the darkness, the sound of crumbling metal echoing in my wake as the catwalk behind me collapsed under the beast's weight. Time lost all meaning, just the relentless pounding in my heart, the desperate gasp for air, the constant looming threat of being cornered. Then a glimmer of light ahead, and not freedom, but an opening into a chamber bathed in sickly green. It held the same foul energy of the lab, but choice, that deceptive luxury was no longer mine. My boots skid as I burst into the chamber. It thrummed with unseen machinery, and across from me a control console blinked enticingly. If I could disrupt something, anything, I might buy myself a few precious seconds. Suddenly, movement in the shadows. None of the beasts, but the swift precision of soldiers. Woken technicians alerted to the chaos I was unleashing. I was trapped between the console and the new threat. A gun was no match for a beast, but the Wolken technicians were a different story. The shots echoed deafeningly in the enclosed space, shattering the illusion of control. Two technicians dropped, startled cries cut short, the others scattered, momentarily confused. Seizing the instant, I charged the console, ignoring the shouts and returning fire echoing behind me. A stray shot grazed my shoulder, a burst of pain, but it fueled my rage. I wasn't going to die cowering. 
My fingers hammered the console, guided more by fury than reason. Alarms blared, lights flickered and died, plunging the room into a chaos of strobe and shadow. The remaining technicians, their movements hindered by the failing systems, hesitated. And in war, hesitation meant death. I spun, firing again as a Wolken lunged forward. It collapsed in a spray of black blood, fear etched on its reptilian face. Its comrades, realizing I was more dangerous than the malfunctioning machinery, aimed with their own weapons. Multiple pulses of energy lanced towards me. Time slowed. I dropped to the floor, rolling behind a heavy equipment crate. Shots scorched the metal where my head had been seconds earlier. I couldn't stay pinned. In the strobe-like flashes, I saw it. An access hatch set into the wall. That was my only escape. Pushing off the ground, I scrambled towards it, gunfire chewing the floor behind my dodging feet. A sharp pain spiked in my calf. A lucky hit. The hatch was agonizingly close. Just as my fingers grasped the release lever, a Wolken charged, rage twisting its scaled features. It raised its weapon, the kill shot glowing. Instinct took over. Kicking out with my good leg, I sent the Wolken sprawling. I tore open the hatch and flung myself into the darkness beyond, slamming the heavy cover shut just as energy blasts hammered it, sending sparks dancing across the metal. I was alive. For now. But trapped in the belly of the beast. Every corner could spell my doom. Landing in a crouch within the darkened passageway, I took stock of the situation. My calf throbbed, my breath rasped like a broken engine. I was leaking blood and running out of time. But I wasn't done. Not yet. My fingers found a grenade on my belt. A last resort, now an unexpected tool of vengeance. Priming it, I waited. The heavy scrape of Wolken feet told me they were coming. I wasn't cornered prey anymore, but a wounded wolf still capable of biting back. The hatch strained as they tried to pry it open. When the opening was wide enough, I lobbed the grenade through and slammed the hatch shut. An instant later, the muffled explosion shook the passage, followed by panic screeches. I grinned, a feral, bloody smile. Taking the fight to them felt damn good, but it had only bought me a few moments. I had to keep moving, exploit the chaos I'd created. Deeper into the labyrinth I went, limping now, leaving a trail of blood. Each shadowed corner could hold an ambush, each flickering light could herald the arrival of the beasts. But fear was receding, replaced by icy resolve. Ahead, a faint flicker of light promised a junction. There, maybe a hint to the facility's layout, a way to find the Wolken's command center, their source of power, something to bring down around their heads. As I neared the junction, a noise stopped me cold. Guttural voices thick with anger. A Wolken patrol, perhaps? My breath quickened. It was time for one last desperate gamble. Crouching in the shadows, I waited. When they stumbled into the junction, their flashlights piercing the darkness, I attacked. A swift, brutal takedown of their closest Wolken. Its strangled cry cut short. My stolen weapon roared, tearing through the others in a burst of surprise and violence. The echoes faded. Bodies littered the junction floor, a testament to my desperate fury. Every kill brought me closer to the truth, closer to ending this nightmare. I wouldn't be a victim. I was a soldier, and I would see this through to its bitter end. The bloodlust thrummed through me. Caution was a luxury I couldn't afford. Every minute I spent cowering was another minute the Wolken had to regroup, to hunt me down. I had the momentum of feral sort of power fueled by desperation and it was time to use it. Bursting from the junction, weapon raised, I didn't hesitate. If there were Wolken ahead, I'd cut them down. If there was a way to the command center, I'd carve my path through their defenses. Surrender wasn't in my vocabulary. Victory was the only way out. My rampage echoed through the sterile metal corridors. Alarms blared, but they couldn't drown out my ragged battle cry or the answering screams of dying Wolken. Their surprise was my greatest weapon, they expected a cornered animal, not a vengeful fury. Through a battered door, I stormed a blinking command center. Wolken officers scattered in panic, their rigid command structure crumbling in the face of my relentless charge. My shots found their marks. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks, sending vital systems haywire across the facility. I had lay a viewport overlooking a massive launch pad. A sleek ship thrummed with barely contained energy. Their means of escape, or perhaps the source of their devastating power. A flicker of doubt and a sliver of hope warred within me. Then I saw it, through the viewport, below the launch pad, a yawning chasm filled with monstrous vats. The same putrid green glow, 
the breeding pits of the beasts. No more hesitation. That monstrous laboratory was ground zero and I had to end it. Ignoring the panicked Vulcan, ignoring the potential consequences, I aimed at the ship. If I could trigger an overload, a chain reaction, maybe, just maybe, I could bring this entire cursed facility down with me. It was a mad gamble, a suicide mission, but a soldier's death is a sacrifice, and if I could take these monsters with me, well, that was a worthy end. My finger tightened on the trigger. This was it. One last defiant act, one final roar against the dying of the light. For my fallen squad, for this ravaged world, and for the countless planets the Wolken would terrorize if they escaped. The gun barked. The overloading ship shuddered, then let out a shriek of tortured metal. Consoles exploded around me, showering me with debris. The Wolken command center disintegrated into chaos as they finally understood my intent. Not just to kill them, but to obliterate everything they had built. Then it began. Not an explosion, but an implosion. The launch pad warped inwards, the ground beneath it collapsing into the monstrous laboratory below. I stumbled backwards as the tremors intensified, the facility crumbling into itself, the vats of unnatural life shattering in a cascade of sickening brilliance. The world tilted. With one final, defiant yell, I was swallowed by the collapsing structure, darkness descending like a shroud. But even as I braced for oblivion, a flicker of grim satisfaction ignited amidst the roaring destruction. I had taken their weapon, their power, their entire monstrous scheme and turned it into their doom. Then came the light. Not a searing blast of detonation, but a cool, piercing beam cutting through the dust and rubble. When my vision cleared, I wasn't staring into the jaws of death, but at a rescue ship, its insignia flickering with an unfamiliar pattern. Not Vulcan, something else. Alien voices called out, sharp and indecipherable. They descended cautiously, weapons raised, regarding me not as an enemy, but as a curiosity, a survivor amidst the ruins. I could barely stand. Blood seeped from a dozen wounds, my consciousness wavering. But I didn't raise my hands in surrender. I lowered my gun, letting it clatter to the broken floor. They had arrived too late to save Rothgar. But perhaps my actions, my desperate sacrifice, had alerted them to a greater threat. The secret horrors of the Wolken. Maybe this wasn't the end. Maybe, just maybe, it was the beginning of a new war. I'm tired, battered, and broken. 